please join us today's call to worship. O God, grant us the gift of faith in the face of what seems impossible. Like Mary, may we say, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. You spoke to Joseph in a dream. Speak to us in our dreams and make your will known. Help us love each other. For love crosses boundaries of culture and tradition. Open our hearts to your still small voice. And help us imagine a new world with you. Amen. Amen. We come to you this day, gracious Lord, exhausted from all the activities of the season. It seems that we spend so much energy, time, and resources in preparation, and then when it's over, we collapse. We wonder what happened to all the enthusiasm we had. Lord, forgive us for placing our energies in getting and gathering. Give us peace and strength to renew our commitment to you. Remind us again to look around at the many ways in which we can be of service to you by serving others. Help us move forward in our compassion and not collapse in our witness. Heal us, merciful Lord, for we ask this in Jesus' name, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I have heard from so many of you over the past few months about how very much you're enjoying coming to worship in your pajamas. So I couldn't resist giving it a try on this Sunday after Christmas. I'd like to start this morning sharing a poem with you that I have read. I've chosen just excerpts, but I think you'll enjoy it. Twas the week after Christmas and all through the house, nothing would fit me, not even a blouse. The cookies I'd nibbled, the egg dog I'd tasted, at the holiday parties had gone to my waist. When I got on the scales, there arose such a number. When I walked to the store, less a walk than a lumber. I'd remember the marvelous meals I'd prepared, the gravies and sauces and beef nicely rare, the wine and the rum balls, the bread and the cheese, and the way I'd never said, no thank you, please. As I dressed myself in my husband's old shirt and prepared once again to do battle with dirt, I said to myself, as I only can, you can't spend the winter disguised as a man. So away with the last of our sour cream dip, Get rid of the fruitcake, every cracker and chip, every last bit of food that I like must be banished till all the additional ounces have vanished. I won't have a cookie, not even a lick. I'll only want to chew on a celery stick. I won't have hot biscuits or cornbread or pie. I'll munch on a carrot and quietly cry. I'm hungry, I'm lonesome, and life is a bore. But isn't that what January is for? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is this to ride a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Well, since my Christmas left me, I get no other gifts. The wood stores cold, the food's grown mold. My arches need a lift, I just a sad Christmas. And it's so sad that it is gone.
sad Christmas, and even sadder now it's gone. Now, what are you doing? I'm singing the blues. The blues? Yeah, the blues. I'd be singing the blues too if I had to play such a teeny weeny little guitar. Well, it's not a guitar. It's a ukulele. Bonnie gave it to me for Christmas. Al, I thought you had asked for a new lawn tractor from Santa. Well, I did, but Bonnie thought my old tractor was just fine and she wanted to give me something that could enhance my artistic endeavors. Ooh, sounds oh, like, uh, oh, okay. like, okay. okay. like uh, a okay. chance says to me when I want something. Stop it, guys. Al, how did you end up here alone? Well, Bonnie hearing me sing the Christmas carols, but when the Christmas, Christmas was over, I really felt very, I really didn't feel joyous. So I moved on to Elvis and Blue Christmas. And that's when Bonnie said, no more moping, no more Elvis. So here I am. Oh, oh man, no tractor and no Elvis. Okay, all right, that's enough. Sorry, yeah. Al. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Al. Yeah. Yeah. Really, we are. It's just that, well, we're supposed to be flying high, like Superman. Oh, and Superwoman. Yeah, and we gotta be a cut above the rest. Strong, fearless, ready to stop a moving train in a heartbeat. Jerry, you know, I have a lot of faith, but that might be pushing it, you know. We're not supposed to put the Lord to the test. Oh, I know what you mean, guys, but I can't help feeling sad. Not only have we been living with this pandemic in our community, but the holidays came and went, and I don't have words sometimes to describe the emptiness, the letdown that comes after this year's Christmas. Poor Al, it's okay. Admit it, Death Super Disciples, we all feel that way. A little, a tiny bit, a squeak. Okay, okay, yes. I feel it too, the letdown. No live nativities. And this year especially, I was really looking forward to playing the role of the innkeeper. I've been practicing so hard with that one famous line, there is no room at the inn. Yeah, there's no more hot chocolate, or no more hot toddies with the neighbors, no more carol sings. No Friday in Black Friday shopping after a day of after Thanksgiving. Jerry, really? And you were making fun of me? Guys, we are here to help the community and each other. That's so true. I have to admit, I wish I could have seen my family, especially my extended family, more throughout the holidays. And I miss Christmas buffet. All the steak, cheesesteak, I can eat, deviled eggs. <laughs> and now it's all the pine needles on the floor and an empty turkey, turkey carcass in the fridge. Super Disciples, you do know there's more to Christmas than food and gifts. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, we all yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. Just think, both Mary and Joseph were visited from angels, telling them of the coming of our Savior. What does one do with that information? It takes a lot of faith and strength to get up every day after hearing that news and wonder how you were going to handle being the parent of Lord Jesus. But they did it. And we can too. Well, I know all of you have been calling or writing to friends just to let them know they are on your mind. And in our hearts, Jan's been gathering puzzles and sharing them with all church friends. It's been a good excuse to connect with folks. And we do this despite our fears and misgivings about this pandemic. But Christmas did add a little light to a somewhat dark time. And now that's over. How do we keep positive and out of the dark? Like Cindy said, the Lord came forth, whether Mary and Joseph were ready or not. I'm never ready for Christmas to be over, but the Lord's light shines bright. 
Yes, it says in John chapter 8, verse 12, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's perfect, Jerry. Jesus is the light in our lives, always and forever. And that light can be found in a phone call, or a meal that you leave on someone's porch. Or a smile and a wave can shine brightly after you shovel a neighbor's driveway. I know, I'll have a Zoom performance for my long distance family members just to help them keep the spirit of the season alive. Just no Christmas blues. And forget the ukulele too. Hey! I also hear that flying gets those happy endorphins flowing in the brain. So let's get flying. Okay? Okay, let's just fly! Remember, disciples, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, doesn't that shine a light on your darkness? It sure does. Jesus is the gift from God that keeps on giving. Pretty poetic, Jerry. I hear that Hallmarks are hiring these days. Um, but don't quit your day job. <laughs> I'm retired. Well, even better. Hallmark, get ready. <laughs> Someday I'm just going to lose it. <laughs> Enough. Well, now let's do the Lord's work and help shine God's light on this community where it is most needed. And as we do that, we will shine a little light in our own hearts. And turn our letdowns into liftoffs. That a boy, Elvis. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, from the second chapter. When they saw this, Jesus lying in the manger to which they had been led, they had made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. It's a strange time. Only three days since Christmas. Doesn't feel long since we've sung the carols and lit the candles in the church. And yet already, already it feels like a distant memory. It seems to me that Christmas comes and goes so quickly. Already, if our neighbor has their lights up for a few more days or Christmas trees are lit, it feels like they've missed the season, like it's already happened. But you know, I think that when we think about Christmas, it's amazing how fast the season goes by. Already presents are unwrapped and the packages are strewn about. The kids have opened their gifts, played with a few things, and sadly, a few are probably already in the this will be used occasionally pile. They've already outlived their interest. When I open the fridge, I'll confess that I think the turkey's about outlived its usefulness too. Already it has that leftover feel and the leftovers have been eaten as many times as we want them. Christmas so quickly comes and goes. It's a season of such great anticipation. And yet once it's gone, we take down all the decorations and 
I don't know if it's just me, but doesn't the house feel a lot bigger than it did before we brought all that stuff in? Christmas has only just passed, yet now the Christmas letdown begins. I sometimes wonder if Mary and Joseph didn't experience some of that same Christmas letdown. I mean, they had had a really high moment for the Christmas season, and Christ's birth brought about things they had never experienced before. But how do you think they felt when everything stopped, when the angel no longer visited regularly, when the shepherds had all gone back to the field? when the Magi had come and delivered their gifts and long since departed. Life had to get back to normal, and I'm sure it did. I'm sure Joseph had to go out and earn an income. For the time that they were in Bethlehem before they fled to Egypt, they had to earn money. Mary would have had to care for the house. Joseph would have had to find carpentry projects. I'm sure as a family they spent time with friends that they made there, and I'm sure they went to worship. But in all of those experiences, what was it like coping with raising a normal child who wasn't? How was it for them as they changed diapers and mushed up food and taught Jesus to walk and talk and how to act in the world, knowing that he looked like every other baby and yet was special and being raised for a unique purpose? How was it for Joseph and Mary as they went about their everyday life? How were they coping? I'm sure they had moments of frustration, confusion, and anxiety, just like the rest of us. I see in Mary one of the keys to coping with the Christmas letdown. She says that she treasured everything and pondered them in her heart. Pondering things, remembering the bigger picture, is a great coping strategy. Mary didn't marginalize or downplay all the big events that had recently occurred in her life, but instead she reflected on them, and she tucked away the feeling of those moments so that she could pull them out and use them in the future as resources for getting through the normal time or the difficult times. I remember that same feeling from when I was a stay-at-home parent for two years after Christy was born. 
At home with two toddlers, there were indeed moments when I had to step out of it and try to grasp the bigger picture, to remember that we wouldn't always be dealing with diapers, that Billy would one day finally sleep through the night, and he did at least when he was seven, and Christy would not always need to be dressed as a princess or with a tutu. But thinking of the bigger picture and grabbing hold of that helped me to carry through in those normal moments or those struggling moments. I think we have the same issues happen in our spiritual lives. We need to have resources to pull out in the darker times. We need to look back and remember what God has done for us, what God has promised us, how God has acted and is still acting in our lives. When we come down from that holiday mountain, we need to find a way to get through the next. We have options. There isn't a right or wrong, but there are choices. Like Mary, we can all sit in that quiet place and ponder things in our hearts for a while. We can sit in the darkness, in the stillness, with a single candle and reflect on the light that has just come into our lives. I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes when the singing and the distractions and the decorations have all been put away, it is then that I'm able to focus more fully. And it is then that I'm able in the quiet stillness to better discern God's voice and where God might be leading me. That is one of the choices we can make. Another one is that we can be like the shepherds and we can go out into the world and we can immediately begin praising God and putting to work all that we have learned and living in that powerful way that they have inspired us to. We can think of all the blessings of this holy season and immediately begin to share them with others. We can dive into the next with renewed faith and gusto, reinvigorated by the spirit to love and to live. Whatever the Spirit moves you to do, however you experience God's presence, stop and listen. Take time to relax and to do something that allows you to feel God's presence. And however you experience God, whether it's in simple things or out in the world or in quiet stillness, take time to listen, for God is still here. And one thing it's important for us to remember as we go about our lives, it's important for us to know that not all good is behind us. We haven't peaked. We have far more than just a downhill ride ahead of us. In fact, we have many things that will still come up for us. God showed up for us 2,000 years ago, and you know what? God never left. So whatever we're doing, Whatever we are, however we move through the world, God is still here guiding and directing us. And we can listen and we can follow. This year has also been a different one, a difficult one. Perhaps that's an understatement. But in this year, we look for ways to find hope. And it's not as easy as flipping open a new calendar for 2021. We'd love to open our calendar and have the whole world start again. But I don't know about you, this one offers me a little hope for the future. But opening the calendar doesn't make it all go away. As we enter 2021, we're all praying. We're praying to see an end to the rampage of COVID-19. We're praying that racial tensions will ease throughout our country. And we're hoping beyond hope that bipartisan compromises will begin to emerge. There is hope as we turn the page to a new year. Life after Christmas is not always easy. It isn't easy for us now, and it wasn't easy for Mary, Joseph, and Jesus then. But as we leave Christmas behind, as Christmas fades behind the rearview mirror, let us think about the things that really are important. Let's not hold fast to the things that the world makes of Christmas, the presents, the meals, the decorations. 
When we leave all of those behind, what are we left with? Let us hold on to those things. The fact that Christ's light has come and shines in every darkness. Let's hold fast to the message of the hymns that we have shared together and the sacred feeling of worship. God himself came and humbled himself. God came to be with us, to be like us, to understand us better and have us understand God more fully. And let us remember that no matter what distractions or disappointments we face, no matter what ways in which we fall short, nothing can and nothing ever will compare to the love God has shown us by showing up in Jesus Christ. Amen. A shame.